Hello gentlemen, welcome to our video on General Properties of Solutions, Section 4.1. Now in class, we introduce solutions via you know, a Gatorade skit or a Gatorade commercial. And we determine that a solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more pure substances distinguished by two parts. We said that those two parts are the solute and the solvent. The substance that is present in the smaller quantity is our solute. That can be a solid, liquid, or gas. And our solvent is a substance present in the greater quantity that can also be a solid, liquid, or gas, depending on the situation. The solute dissolves into the solvent. And in the case of our class, you know, this is really going to be what we're going to focus on mostly is that the solute is what dissolves. The solvent is commonly, for us, going to be water or alcohol, and the solute is either an ionic or molecular compound. Now, when an ionic substance dissolves in water, the solvent pulls the individual ions from the crystal and solvates them. An example of that is here. Here we have NaCl as this large green and purple substance. The Na is the green and the Cl is the purple. Water, which is represented by these excuse me, the different color here, these red and white molecules here. This is water. Water is going to, when I put salt crystals into water and stir it up, the water molecules are going to surround the Na and separately surround the Cl. We call this process dissociation. We're disassociating the ions from one another. The Na and the Cl, as a compound NaCl, are dissociated. They come apart when we dissolve NaCl in water. So when we write the term aqueous, that's what we're saying, is that this ionic substance is dissolved in water. So when the sodium chloride dissociates, we used to have NaCl, we dissolved it in water, meaning it's aqueous now, and then it becomes Na plus and Cl minus while in aqueous solution. Now, this process is called dissociation. In general, if I take any substance and I put it in water and it dissolves in water or any other solvent, we call that something called solvation. It's like salvation, hallelujah, but it's solvation, S-O-L-V-A-T-I-O-N. Solvation is the process of a solvent, like water in this case, surrounding an ionic compound, an ion, molecules, while in solution and dissolving it. It doesn't have to be an ionic compound for solvation to take place, but in order for dissociation to take place, it is ionic substances. You're disassociating an ion from another ion in solution. Now, we mentioned the word electrolytes in class. An electrolyte is a substance that dissociates into ions when dissolved in water. So, just like the, skit, though, the picture we just saw, this is going to form an electrolyte solution if I dissolve NaCl in water because I'm going to have those ions that disassociate from one another and create ions in solution. When I, create, when I have ions in solution, ions are able to, well, ions are charged. We have to remember that. That's really important. They create an electro, electrolytic solution, and ions are charged, and we know charges can carry electric current. So charges can conduct electricity. So when ionic compounds are dissolved in water, they create electrolytes. These electrolytic solutions can conduct electricity. That's why they're essential for our bodies, because a lot of what happens in our body is um, electrically charged, electrical reactions. Now we have electrolytes, but we also have non-electrolytes. Non-electrolytes, they do dissolve in water, or well, many of them do dissolve in water through the process of solvation, meaning water molecules just simply surround this molecule, but it does not dissociate into ions when it does dissolve in water, meaning there is no dissociation happening. There are no ions present, and we know about this. These are molecular compounds. So molecular substances, for example, methanol, which is this substance here, it doesn't have, it's not joined together by ions, so 
when water, which is represented again by these blue, I'm sorry, these red and white molecules, when water surrounds methanol, it will start to attract to the methanol and then dissolve it. Meaning it just looks like it's creating a uniform homogeneous mixture. Solutions of non-electrolytes are not conductors of electricity because there are no ions present. So remember that. There are no ions present, so it is a non-electrolyte, is non-conducting, a non-conductor of electricity. Now, <clears throat> if we were going to summarize electrons, sorry, electrolytes, non-electrolytes and weak electrolytes into a chart, here's a chart from your book that I've pulled that we can use. So many things are electrolytes, many things are not electrolytes, but some things fall in the middle and we call those weak electrolytes. So strong electrolytes are all ionic compounds. Any ionic compound you can think of is going to be pretty much a strong electrolyte. So all ionic compounds. And all strong acids are going to be strong electrolytes. And we'll get into a list of what those strong acids are in just a moment. Weak electrolytes are going to be, none of them will be ionic, excuse me. Many of them will be weak acids and weak bases down here. I'll talk about what those are and what those look like momentarily as well. And non-electrolytes, you will not have any ionic compounds being non-electrolytes. And pretty much any other, or any molecular compound you can think of is going to be a non-electrolyte because it won't dissociate into ions. This particular chart is categorizing acids as molecular compounds, even though they're co even though they're ionically put together, not covalently put together, simply because they are two nonmetals. Now, soluble ionic compounds tend to be electrolytes. Check. We should know that now. Strong acids and strong bases tend to be electrolytes. Here is a list of strong acids to know, from hydrochloric acid all the way down to sulfuric acid. So I would get to know these seven strong acids. You will not be given a chart on them, you will have to know what they are in order to determine if they're going to be strong electrolytes or not. And strong electrolytes in terms of bases are bases that have metal hydroxides from group 1A or 2A. We know hydroxides are OH minus, so if we have an OH minus paired up with an Li, Na, K, Rb, or Cs, or Ca, Sr, or sorry, in, sorry yeah, Ca, Sr, and Ba, as you have here. These are all your strong bases. Now, continuing on with the summary here, let's talk about weak electrolytes a little bit more. Weak electrolytes contain a solute that is only partly ionized in solution meaning only part of it dissociates. So weak electrolytes are poor conductors of electricity due to their lack of dissociated ions in the solution. Since all of that particular substance didn't dissociate into its individual ions, then you're not going to have as many ions in solution, meaning you're not going to have as many particles that can conduct or carry electric charge. And these are usually going to be weak acids and weak bases. And we'll talk more about that in class, so what those look like. In terms of non-electrolytes, they are typically molecular compounds. Some examples would be sugar, C12, H12, sorry, C22, H12, O11, antifreeze. This is actually wrong. That shouldn't be there. But it's okay. Antifreeze, C2H6O2, and pure water, H2O. And pure water, not tap water. And we'll talk more about that in class. So if we talk about strong electrolytes, an example would be hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is an acid that will dissociate completely in solution, meaning it would dissociate into H plus and Cl minus completely. There is no tendency for the ions to go back and form HCl. That does not happen. And, but weak electrolytes, that does happen. So here we have acetic acid. And if you notice, this is in a different format than we've seen before. Acetic acid can be in all of these different formats. Excuse me. It can be as C2H4O2. C2H6O2. 
CH3COH or that down there. It's just acetate with the hydrogen on it. Um, I've written it simply as what we see here. Now these are weak electrolytes. If we notice what's happening here is we have this acetic acid. It's dissociating into H plus and CH3COO1 minus, the acetate anion. This reaction is significant in both directions. Up here, this reaction was only significant in the forward direction, but down here, it's significant in both directions. We represent that by using half arrows pointing in both directions. What this means is that in any given moment, your acetate, sorry, your acetic acid will dissociate into H plus and acetate. But at that same time, you can have H plus here and CH3COO1 minus going back to form your acetic acid. They're recombining. This reaction is a this reaction will be called um, a reaction that's in chemical equilibrium when that happens. So when your rate of reaction going the forward direction is the same as your rate of reaction going the opposite direction, the reverse direction, then you're in chemical equilibrium. We'll talk more about that in class as we go along, but know that this is a weak acid, and a weak acid is a weak electrolyte. There is some dissociation here. We do have ions present, but since some of them are turning back into your acetic acid, it is not a strong electrolyte. It will conduct some electricity, but not a ton. Just a little summary of it all, pure water, <clears throat> it does not conduct electricity as a molecule, so that light bulb would not be lit. Sucrose, it is a molecule as well, non-electrolyte, would not conduct electricity. Sodium chloride, however, is an ionic compound, the Na and the Cl would associate completely, giving you some conductivity and that light will light up. So. A little brainstorming for you, a question to leave you with. How do you believe electrolyte solutions are used outside of the production of Gatorade?